Just off the phone, I'm told, with the CFO of the company. Uh, what did he have to tell you, Emily? Hey there, Roman Main. Thanks. Obviously, very good point that a lot of the bad news was already priced in. Therefore, you're seeing that reaction in, in the stock and, and, you know, revenue beat, iPhone beat. But you are seeing some still significant declines across product categories. With the iPhone in particular, uh, Luca Maestri told me one of the, the big difficulties here is a difficult comp, a $5 billion dollar. Uh, disruption that was due to some supply chain issues that led to some delayed sales, which means, again, the comparisons are a little more difficult. But the headline from Mark Hall really was that he said, we expect to grow low single digits in the June quarter. And they're going to be talking about that a little bit more on the call. So all the folks out there wondering, is Apple still a growth company? At least for the June quarter, Apple is predicting they will be. Let's talk about China. Um, Romain was mentioning earlier, greater China revenue in the second quarter, uh, $16.37 billion, down about 8% from a year ago when analysts were looking for $15.87 billion. So that is a better than expected print for greater China. But that region, that market for Apple has been a source of a lot of concern for investors. Did he give any color on what their prospects are in China? Absolutely, Scarlett. You're looking at a $1.5 billion decline in China and APAC separately. In China specifically, he talked about that disruption. You're seeing some impacts there. But he said, we're actually happy with our results in China. Specifically, he said, this is the most competitive smartphone market in the world, without a doubt. But we're, we feel good about the results. He talked about Tim. Tim Cook being in China recently, the new store they opened in Shanghai, the level of enthusiasm for the brand being very strong, the fact that they had the top two top selling smartphones mm. uh, in the quarter, um, they set a record for upgraders. So he said the reality is very different from what you read at times. So, Emily, I'm scouring right now through these uh, <laughs> press releases and presentations to get all those fat numbers that we're supposed to see off that Vision Pro headset. I don't know if you have one of these things here, but uh, talk to me a little bit about the wearable strategy. I mean, I'm kind of being facetious. We know it did not quite take off as quickly as maybe they expected here, but are they standing by that strategy? What did Luca tell you? I, I, I've tried the Vision Pro and I thought it was awesome, but I didn't buy it one myself. So, so maybe that tells you something. You know, the wearables category was weaker despite the launch of the Vision Pro and some of the mixed reports about the Vision Pro. We talked about that, and again, he said it's a tough comp. He said that last year they released some new AirPods, some new watches. Those were very popular, but overall that they're still very excited about the category. It's grown a lot over the years. In fact, it's doubled in revenue mm -hmm. over the last five years. So uh, that launch compare was tough. And we also talked a little about a bit about AI. Um, obviously, WWDC, their big developers conference is coming up. They're going to be talking a lot about AI there. He, he, he said they think it's a great opportunity. It has a lot of potential. It's where they're making significant investments. And this is going to be really important for Apple. Can they build in new features? features, you know, you know, better software that gets people really excited about upgrading, replacing, or even, you know, coming over uh, to iOS as a platform.